God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Life Purpose Church, our Sunday evening service. But what a great way to start the summer. I know it's been a blessing to, I, I, I participated, I went to two graduation ceremonies. I went to Dalisa Lopez on Donna North High School, and I went to one of my members, Jennifer Valencia from Nikki Rowe High School, and it was just such a beautiful, uh, McCann ISD always have a beautiful ceremony with the fireworks and you know our, our superintendent Dr. J.A. Gonzalez thank you Dr. Gonzalez for your faithfulness for reading the Bible scripture every morning for 2017 we're, we're really blessed to have you as our superintendent Dr. Gonzalez and, and as well as you guys know we're going to welcome the Luna family um, thank you Lua, to um, Adali's parents and her brother Carlos and man you did a good job in the marshmallow game but also, we also have our, our, our Bible assistant, Adali, going to be joining us as well. And before we get in on our announcement or any updates for what's going to happen this summer in June, we'll go ahead and go into our word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for such a beautiful year, Father. Father, we want to pray for all our, our graduate seniors, class of 23. I, I have an honor to attend Genesis and Dalisa. Such a beautiful ceremony, and Father, we want to pray and continue to pray for the seniors as they step into a new chapter to continue to pursue education, academics, military, or or even being in the service, Father, or you know, any job, Father. But yet, you, Lord, you're going to equip them and you're going to guide them, and we declare in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Well, guys, want well, to welcome to our Light Purpose Service. Here are some announcements. We do have an uh, event coming up. I do have some flyers with me as well. On on June 12th, um, next week, on Monday, we're going to be celebrating 14 year anniversary of Test Ministry. Man, what a journey, man. Um, every morning, sending Bible scriptures for, for middle school and high school students in general. And I just want to say thank you so much. So we're going to have a plat ceremony. We're going to have a, a, a guest speaker, Rudy Patron, is going to be sharing. We have Frank. Pastor Frank from New Hope going to do the presentation and man, just come guys, just have fellowship and I, I do have flyers here guys. Um, make plans guys on June 16 and 17. We're going to have an event, New Connection Ministry. We're going to have one here in Edinburgh, Texas at Torres Flote, Capo de Dios. We're going to have an awakening event. We have some guest speaker, Abel Gomez on 17. We're going to have uh, Dr. Javier Martinez and Christ Up Ministry going to minister his rap music and we're very blessed. We're going to continue to minister to the younger generation, to our teenagers and middle school students. And that's well, guys. Let me just go ahead and go into my my library. And today we're going to do part one in our transformation series. We're going to be talking about emotional help, emotional help. And I want to just let me just do a test really quick. Adali, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome, man. I'm so blessed with Adali's faithfulness and this is her fourth. Uh, time helping me through the service I know she was with me we did the grace message but I, I know she's here today and I'm very blessed with uh, Dolly and, and her brother Carlos man, they were so young the teenagers but yet they're, they're pursuing the Lord and they're going to Bible study and they're coming to church on Wednesday I mean Sunday mornings and I'm very blessed with those um, the children even with the younger teenagers as well and thank you everyone um today we're going to start doing a Bible teaching on emotional help and one of the, the number one thing that calls from teenagers, is, 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 is all teenagers, is sleep paralysis. Now, sleep paralysis, when, uh, when you're in middle school, even elementary or high school, when you're trying to go to sleep, but your body froze, but yet you're still awake, but you can't move, that is, that is called, called sleep paralysis. And we believe that there's no peace. You're, you're going through anxiety. You think about your grade. You think about school. You think about, you know, so much problems at home. But yet, Jesus, the Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 27, Peace that I leave with you. No, not what the world gave in my peace. Not let your heart be troubled. Not let me be afraid. So today, we're going to talk about emotional help. And it's very common for the younger generation. Now, when I say the younger generation, I think the age between, um, I think, uh, the age between uh, 12 to 24 years old. And at that generation, uh, they're, they're, they're more, they're exposed to social media, they're exposed to YouTube video, but yet we're gonna help you with a tool to help you, to give you peace, to, 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 to help you to set free from your emotions. So 
The first scripture we're going to read, Adani can read Mark chapter 12, verse 20. I mean 29. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. See, there is your main picture. Even in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, we should love the Lord your God with all your soul, all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. Meaning that when you walk with Jesus, we need to have an atmosphere of worship. We need to have an atmosphere of God's presence. And I, I like this quote, and I shared it with the youth group in Edinburgh, that God is the only author that is present when you read the Bible, because God's Word is medicine. God's Word is what's going to heal you. So we need to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. It's the only way that we can be, we can set free from your emotion. We can be set free from your depression, anxiety, or osomia when you have sleepless nights or any different uh, uh, medical problem, but yet the Lord can set you free. Uh, let's go ahead and continue. Um, see, God has emotion. Now, did you know that God has emotion too? If you remember back in the days of, of Noah, when God felt sorry, he felt that he saw a lot of wickedness. Now, before uh, he called Noah I mean, to build the ark, God flooded the whole world. God has emotion too. Now, here's my... Uh, my statement, my ability to feel is a gift from God. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. See, God created us. He designed us in his own image, from his own likeness. Now, if you guys remember in, in, in Genesis chapter 2, God created Adam from the dust. He breathed to his nostril. See, God created man. Because God created us, so, we're, so God gave us breath. He breathed you know, life from so, so we are created, and yet it's no, it's normal. God has emotions too. God feels how we feel, but yet we can handle our emotions. We can handle our our our, our stress, you know, anger, or jealousy, or envy, or you know. But uh, yet, you can, we can live with the peace of God in your heart. And look ahead, and continue reading in our sermon note. So we talk about Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six. The next one, God gives us. The book of Psalms to understand our emotion. Now, did you know if you read the book of Psalms, there's so many different Bible scriptures to understand, you know, how, how we can handle our emotion, how, how we can control our emotion. There's so many uh, Bible scriptures. I'm going to give you a few. In Psalm chapter 37, verse 4, if you, if you do delight yourself to the Lord, to give you the desire of your heart. Psalm chapter 20, verse 4, if you, um, May he fulfill the desire of your heart. May all your plans succeed. See, now even David, David wrote multiple books of songs. Now, uh, let's go ahead and c to continue. Uh, what, what am I, okay. See, how to heal damaged emotion. Now, we're going to share five key notes, how to handle our emotion. Number one, my feelings often, often, Unreliable. My feelings are often unreliable. Now let's read Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in the way of death. Uh, read verse 15. I mean, excuse me, uh, read verse 13. Even in laughter, the heart may sorrow, and the end of mirth may be grief. Amen. Meaning that in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, we may have to guard your heart always. So a, a lot of times that when when you allow your influence, then it, 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 it may be toxic 
in, in your relationship, maybe your friendship, or maybe you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or anything, but we need to, we need to guard your heart and be wise what you're allowing, what your heart is influenced. Now, for example, let's say uh, a Dolly, especially she's in high school right now, she have a friends are very encouraging, they're motivating, they always want to encourage her every time. And those are good, positive friends. Because those negative friends are going to get you in trouble, they're going to uh, pressure you, they're going to help you get you in trouble. No, you got to remove those negative friends and have influence in your life, to be successful in life, to have influence in your life. And let's go ahead and continue with number two. Because I don't want to be manipulated, manipulated. And let's go ahead and read Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. Has no rule over his own spirit. It's like a city broken down without walls. Now, for example, people may, may see your good nature, they may see your good spirit. This is why we need to build uh, our heart around, you know, what God's word. People might use you. People might ma ma uh, how do you say that word? manipulate you. This is why we need to have discernment. The Bible says in Philippians chapter one. To, to have discernment, to, to, to have wisdom, to, to, to know, you never know that person might take advantage of you, it might pressure you, it might manipulate you. This is why we need to have a heart guarded through the scripture, to have a, you know, have God give you discernment and wisdom. This is why I, I like, you know, Abraham, or you, Pastor Abraham, has such a good heart. He cared about his youth group. He cared about his, you know, doing worship, though. That man has a good heart, though. But I, I learned that Abraham, he has a spirit, you know, of trust. He, he, he trusts people. That's why Abraham, he always guard his heart with, with God's word and the Bible as well. And let's go ahead and continue with, uh, before we, okay, before we cover up number two, because I don't want to be manipulated. Now, remember this, the devil's favorite tool is negative emotion. Now, before we get into 1 Peter 5 eight, now, did you know the devil's favorite tool is negative emotion? You know, it, it, it's normal to have emotion. Yes, that maybe you're, you're always, somebody's always been negative. It's always, you know, speaking negative, always, you know, be lazy or don't want to, you know, do anything. But see, the devil used that tool to make you feel negative. Now, here's a quote I like. We, we need to replace negative thought and add positive thinking and watch a different life. So when you when you have a, if you're a person that is very positive, very optimistic, always have goals, always want to pursue dreams, and God will help you and to guide you through the Bible. I myself have many different dreams I want to do in life. I want to travel around the nation, speak to youth group. But I want to uh, ask God to guide my heart first to make me become a positive person. Now, you don't want to hang out with somebody who's always negative, always angry, or always use profanity or, or all that because uh, except that's going to hurt you very uh, in a long time. And we'll go ahead and continue. We, um, our daughter, you can be First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yes, if you, if you remember in First Peter chapter five verse seven, to cast all your care upon him, for he cares about you. Cast all your anxiety, uh, everything. Give the Lord care about you, but we need to be sober minded. We need to be watchful because the devil, he's like a lion. He's ready, he's ready to devour. This is why um, our, our bedroom, our home, we need to have God present. To, to protect us, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 91, verse 11, For the Lord will, will send his angel to charge over you, to protect you. This is when, uh, when we understand the, uh, grace, when we understand peace and joy. So allow God's heart and his spirit to be in you. See, there's a difference between light and darkness. You can be a person of light, the person that lives in God's word, the God's word is the Bible and his medicine, or you can live in darkness, 
to uh, allow your mind to be toxic. If it will uh, cause you to have depression, it might cause you to have sadness, but yet the Lord will want to give you strength and give you ability to do all things. And let's go ahead and continue reading on uh, number three. I want to please God. I want to please God. And let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 6 to 8. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now I want to give you a, a fact what I learned about the spirit and about the flesh. The Bible says in the book of Galatians, if you walk in the spirit, you get life. If you walk in the flesh, you get death. Meaning that the Bible says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified by Christ. I no longer live, but Christ that lives in me. So when you allow Jesus to live in your heart, but the Jesus spirit will dwell in your heart, so we live in the light. That's why we've been set free. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 32, you should know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's why we need to live in the spirit. We need to live uh, the Lord in the spirit. So why, um, okay, let's go ahead and go to number four. I want to proceed in life. And I got it. Read Proverbs chapter 5, verse 23. Now, to give you a sample, this is when that knowledge and wisdom comes in. Because if you want to be successful in life, you, you, like I mentioned before, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, do not be misled. Bad company will corrupt good character. Then you have Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, so what would the wife you become wise. It's always good to crown yourself with intellectual people. People have loved the Lord that pray for you as well. Because it be successful, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, if, if you commit your way to the Lord, your plan will proceed. By, I want to encourage you, Dolly, by going to Bible study every week and listening to Abraham or going to the Sunday morning services or listening to Pastor Frank or Fine, you know, even do the like Bible reading with your family or just continue to, to grow in the wisdom of, of the Lord. And let's go ahead and continue um, reading as well. So let's go up uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 2. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Yes. See, now I want to give you guys um, some points, some keynotes here. See, point number one, we need to learn to, uh, to, to manage our depression. And number two is to, to overcome all, all your emotions. So because a lot of times that we, 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 we try to comprehend our emotions, so we, yet a lot of times we can't you know, control it. This is when the God's word, the worship, the atmosphere of worship, it can set you free as well. It, it can really set you free as well. And I think I skipped some points, so uh, let me just go ahead and, and go back to my sermon, though, if we go. Okay, I'll just go ahead and continue. Um, did I spot from point number four, Dolly? Uh, are you there? Yes. Okay. Uh, Okay, okay, I, I found it. Okay, okay um, uh, man, I'm lost a little bit. Lost, um, but okay, but, but we did First Peter chapter four verse two, right? Yes. Okay, uh, the next one is need to to identify it. We need to identify it. Um, now a lot of times, did you ever have a feeling, or somebody tells you how you feeling? A lot of times the response is, I don't know. See, when, when we, we can't identify our feeling, but we need to name it our, our feeling. For example, if somebody asks me, hey, Jared, um, how are you feeling? And I'll say, well, my response is, I'm blessed. 
I'm praising the Lord or uh, I give thanks to my Heavenly Father Jesus. So a lot of times that when, when we have some emotion, we need to learn to identify our emotion. Now, if you remember in the book of Psalms, David had a lot of emotions too. And uh, Adani would read Psalms chapter 55, verse 2. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily. Yes. Now, if you guys know David, David gone through a lot of emotion. If, if you read First Samuel chapter 15 up to chapter 19, David went through battles. But yet David, well, well, according to the scripture, he was a man after God's own heart. See, a lot of times that we, we have questions about what am I feeling? You know, have, it, have that ever happened to you when, when a friend or a somebody tells you how you're feeling today, but usually your response is, I don't know. Because this is when the, the devil's favorite tool is negative. This is when as we, as, as believers of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, is to walk with, with, with faithfulness, to walk with praising the Lord. I like what Amana Dahlia from New Hope. Amana Dahlia, every time I see her, she keeps saying, New Hope, we need to praise the Lord. We need to break that chain. We need to be broken no more. And, and I believe what we need to be un, un, broken. And I do have a sermon series on YouTube called Unbreakable. If you, if you want to go on my YouTube video, my library, just go to Unbreakable on YouTube. And let's go ahead and continue reading our, our, our notes. So we talk about um, the question, what am I feeling? So let's go ahead and continue. Um, here's another scripture from David. Uh, Adali, we Psalm 26, verse 2. Examine me, O Lord, and probe me. Try my mind and my heart. Amen. Now, I want to give you a little exercise what I learned about emotions. Have you ever, like, hang out with somebody that's very positive, very optimistic, very, very happy? You know, like, you always want to hang out with that one person. I, myself, have a friend who are very positive, very happy, always have a sense of humor. I always like hanging out with those kind of friends. So when I had my youth group um, with, with, with Abraham on Wednesday night, so before I do my Bible study, I like to have games. Games is a great way to engage, to to encourage the youth group. This past Wednesday, I did a game called Mathematical Game. Basically, we have like, like five, I think like five or six, seven youth. We did a Mathematical Game, and, and it, it, it's a chance to help them to get engaged with the youth service. To, to help them, you know, just to relieve any stress, anxiety, or depression. So I believe games is a good tool that I use with the youth group at New Hope to, to help them as well. And let's go ahead and continue reading. Uh, now, number five, what is the real, oh man, my, okay, my microphone there. What is the real reason why I am feeling this? Have you ever had this question, Adalia, anybody? Why is it you're feeling this? Why is this, you know, um, thinking or your thoughts or, or the way how you feel? Why are you feeling depressed? Why are you feeling stressed or having a hard time, you know, uh, you know anywhere in life, you know, with life battle? But yet the, the keynote is what I learned from ministers and preachers. They asked me this question, Jared, have you been reading your Bible every day? Now, the reason why I use that the Bible says that we need to meditate in God's Word every day. Now, did you ever notice when you read the Bible every day, it, it, it brings you peace, it calms your mind, it gives you strength, it gives you a purpose. Now, I learned that when, when, when you're feeling depressed, when you're feeling lonely or negative, or you're having a hard time, I, we go to the Bible as well, because God's Word is medicine as well. And we'll now, let's go to um, Adali, we'll go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your 
good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Amen. Amen. I remember when I was doing a sermon series, you know, on grace. We talked about order. See, God is the author of peace. God is a, is, a, is a God of order. You know how when you go to uh, a dolly, I don't know, when you go to school, they give you like, like, a, like a class schedule? Mm-hmm. And yeah. they, you know, they give you a schedule because you gotta go to Algebra 1, you gotta go to focus study, you gotta go to all your classes, so, so they give you an order. And yeah, you do have to go on time, so you wanna get tardy. <laughs> Oh man, I'm thinking about memories, man. I, I, I used to run the class, I don't get tardy, but the point is though that God is a God of order. And let's go ahead and continue. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by anointing, by power, but, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Yes. Now, I want to give you two more guidelines that I want to give you from my body, what helped me. You know, I get questions all the time. Jared, how do you memorize the Bible scripture so much? Or Jared, you know, how do you know the Bible so much? And I'll give you one reason only. Jesus. It's not me. It's not my flesh. It's not because I can tell you I dedicate my Bible for 15 plus years. No, because it's Jesus that gives me the word. People ask me, Jared, how do you remember so many Bible scriptures? And I say, because you have to meditate in God's word every day. But what we're going to talk about with two guidance, helpful advice to help you to be strong in the word. And not just learning the scripture or memorizing the scripture, but you need to practice on the scripture, to practice the scripture, to, to continue to immerse yourself and the Bible by practicing the scripture in your life, by applying it in your life. So here are the two, uh, the two guidelines. Number one, ask God to fill me with his spirit. Ask him to fill me with his spirit. And I got to read Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to Now, to give you an example why I mentioned about the filming with your spirit, this is a, a good way. Maybe you're a, a believer in Christ. You, you recently accepted Jesus in your heart. Maybe you're, you're struggling with uh, emotional like depression, anxiety, suicide thoughts. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, it, it's called the fruit of the spirit. To apply the fruit of the spirit, maybe you want to practice on being a joyful person. Maybe you want to practice to live in peace or long suffering or kindness. For example, um, when I'm, when I'm at the when I'm walking at Walmart and I see a guy, he's carrying a bell. He's ringing a bell and they put a little bucket and I, and I show kindness. I put like a dollar or, or two dollars or some quarters into the little bucket though for Christmas. Or you, know, you want to show kindness though. Like one time uh, with my friend Stephanie, we were going to uh, to Chick Fil A and I wanted to pay for the person behind me that show the spirit of fruit, the kindness. This is a great way for you to practice, to ask God every day to fill you with the spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, etc. And let's go ahead and go to continue reading. So we talk about, um, oh snap, okay. We talk about make God's word and my, in, in, in my word. Uh, I think, okay, so we talk about uh, number, Number one, we talk about ask God to fill me with his spirit. Then we talk about Galatians chapter 5, 22, 23. Here's the next one, number two. Every day, ask God to guide your words. Ask God to guide your words. And Adali, read Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Now, have you always have you always noticed a quiet person, a person that's very quiet, not because a person shy, no, 
like you know, uh, I I've seen of people at the library or I've seen of people at school. They're very quiet. They they, they live with the scripture of Proverbs chapter thirteen verse three. Because one of the things that I learned about the quiet people, the white now the um what this, make God's word, my word, make God's word my word, meaning that to examine your words carefully. So I myself, you know, I'm a funny guy. I, I like to make people laugh. It's true though, but I have to be wise and be careful what I say. So I have to make sure to make God's word His word. Because if we, if we want to be like Jesus, to live like Jesus, even Jesus is a good example though, that He always speaks with love, with wisdom and kindness. He always heals the people. Yes, Jesus does rebuke. That's in another sermon. But we have to always guide our word carefully. Make uh, our word God's word. And so go ahead and continue. Uh, reading and let's go. Let's go. Psalms one nineteen verse verse eleven. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now read verse fourteen. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. Now I want to encourage you what Dottie said in Psalm 119 verse 11. Are you there Dottie? Yes. Okay now the Bible says in Psalm 119 105 that God's word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now if you're struggling right now with any kind of negative thinking, emotions, suicidal thoughts, Maybe you're angry right now with your parents, or maybe you're just living life, you know, feeling like frustrated. Always remember Psalm 119, 105, that God's word is a lamp, a light to my feet. But we have a, my advice, it will help me, or it will help you, maybe Adali, is to, is to spend time in the Bible, spend time in the word, to live life, be successful in life, live life at peace, you know, to, to be successful. There's, so, there's, there's like so many people I can share with you that are very successful. Dr. Dr. Gonzalez, who's the McCann ISD superintendent, I have an opportunity to pray for him. I have an opportunity to send him Bible scripture every morning. And I want to honor Dr. Gonzalez. He's a man of prayer. He's a man of few words. He always have Jesus in his heart. And, and every time he does speech or he does like any uh, ceremony, he always allow God's word to be, be God's word in his mouth as well. Uh, I'll thank you, God bless you, Dr. Gonzalez. He did an amazing speech at the graduation ceremony. Thank you. So I want to say thank you, everybody, for I hope you enjoy our number one, uh, part one. We're going to continue with part two next week on transformation. Uh, we're going to focus more on Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind as well. So I want to have an honor of Dottie. going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for our life with Jared. I thank you for the word that he has brought in today's evening. I thank you that I ask that you bless him and his family, and I ask that you bring us with peace in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Um, I want to give honor to Adali. She's just such a amazing woman of God. You know, like she, she, I don't really know if she's the first person to open the Bible in the youth service. But I'm very, um, I, I know um, I have a daddy hoping she can come to the youth event to open up prayer as well. Um, a joint of guy, I will be posting the youth event. I'm not able to go going to be doing a promo video as well. But God bless you guys. Um, for a daddy, thank you, thank you so much though. I hope you have a really good Sunday morning service. Did you? Yes, I did. Yeah. Amen. I want to let you go, Dolly. Thank you for joining our service today. The video will be uploaded on YouTube as well. So that way, you know, your family or your brother can watch it. Okay, thank you so much. And God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Bless you. Bye. Amen. You know, um, I want to say thank you for my Lord Jesus Christ for his faithfulness. It's not easy to do church services though, but God is faithful to send our dolly. We want to honor our, our past members like uh, James and Stephanie and 
and all the other people be here on still we're always going to be faithful to the Lord just like the Lord faithful to us so well, God bless you guys and have a wonderful evening take care